Hindi Fat, of course, was hit by a kamikaze. I, I was in the crew room um, waiting to get airborne. The airplanes were spotted, and the, the fighter direction officer on broadcast came out saying a raid approaching at so many miles, getting close, and then man aircraft, I manned my aircraft. I was number two to take off. Well, uh, the ship was at, uh, uh, at action stations, but they, they had uh, different um, uh, forms of it. So, you, you know, when the radar picked up uh, these kamikazes on, on their way out to the task force, uh, the ship was alerted and people went to action stations. But nothing uh, more was done until the attack became imminent, which means that the, the, the kamikazes were starting their dive. Then the old the hooters used to scream out, and, and the, uh, the, that was the warning to take cover. And on this particular day, this kamikaze pilot uh, at sea level managed to evade the radar screen and the lookout screens. And we were suddenly aware in the air operations room, which was in, in the uh, second floor of the island, that uh, guns were opening fire. Um, and uh, we wondered what was going on. And as I got up to end, literally, I looked up and there was a trap with a big red spot on the Japanese aircraft just about like, two or three hundred feet above me. So I you know, whipped up the undercarriage, kind of turned the gun side on, pulled the but I mean, it was hopeless, it was up here. No way I could get in. He was still turned and went straight into the ship behind me and I saw the ship disappear in a mass of flames. So I was very lucky just to get airborne before that uh, aircraft left was becoming kind of destructive. I joined the Navy on April the 1st, April Fool's Day, at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we were hit by a kamikaze on April the 1st at 7 o'clock in the morning. 20 odd killed and 60 wounded. But then we were all ranged on deck. We had uh, I think 18 Avengers arranged, um, 10 Fireflies and about 15 Seafires and of course we all scarpered out of the aircraft as quick as we could. We had a strike force in the air, uh, there were some on the forward end of the flight deck, not many, most were down, down below in the hangars. We had some on the after end of the flight deck because my kite was there and this crazy pilot of mine used to carry a 4-5. Uh, with most of us wish it was 3 eights, but he had to be different. He'd got a 4-5 from somewhere. Colt, Colt 45. Yeah. And, uh, as this, we saw this thing coming in. It was almost like a cowboy. He sort of drew from the hip. He was blasting away with his revolver, getting nowhere. But I suppose it relieved his feelings. The uh, RMVR lieutenant who was in... The uh, number two in the air operations room ran through uh, Commander O's uh, sea cabin, which had a, a porthole opening onto the flight deck. And he must have arrived at that porthole as the kamikaze hit, because the whole of the uh, porthole, which is armor plated, uh, was just blown into his, his body. And we got the blast from the kamikaze uh, explosion uh, coming up uh, and lifted uh, the commander and I uh, off our feet and dumped us back into the operations room on our, on our backsides. So by being a bit slower, uh, we survived it. I remember it very well. I remember the day very well. I was in... I was asleep, actually. I, I got up, we briefed, briefed a crew for takeoff. One of our crew was on the front of the carrier, ready for takeoff to do one of these jobs like Jack Patrol or Dumbo Cap or something like that. And I was, I had flown I think late the previous night and I was still getting up and shaving. 
and there was a bang. And this kamikaze hit the base of the island. It killed a Canadian doctor we were very fond of. It blew the, the bugler down the steps and he broke, his, he broke his legs. It killed about two or three more people and put the operations room out of action. But it didn't put the flight deck out of action. Within half an hour, we had a barrier back in use and we were landing on planes. Now, the American liaison officers we had were astonished at this. Absolutely astonished. They thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And in fact, we had kamikaze attacks after that about every three days. And Victorious got hit, Formidable got hit. But in every occasion, we recovered very quickly and were landing on them, firing off planes. It's an extraordinary thing that people think about, you know, extraordinary gallantry in war, and I'm sure there is, but I, I didn't experience very much of it myself, because you always had these terrible thoughts, and my thought was, as I saw the ship disappear in a mass of flames, oh well, there's three others I can land on, because we had four carriers out there, and so I'll be able to get back onto something. But uh, the ship was remarkable, I mean... This was the uh, real story of the, of the armoured deck, four inches of armoured plate, which saved the ship. Uh, we then, of course, were able for an hour and a half before we came back, came back and landed on in the, um, and enabled it to uh, survive. And I believe they brought on, well, I know they did, they brought on the lot we were launched to relieve. Half an hour later, uh, they only had two wires working, I think, and they still only had two wires working when we came back. We didn't know that, of course, and landed on quite normally. And as usual, I'm straight below, but I've never forgotten the smell because you well, well, the, <coughs> the kamikaze had gone into the base of the island, which was just aft of the crew room, and right into the um, the sick bay part of the island, the little sick bay there and had gone in there, and there was this smell of, I suppose, blood and, 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 and fuel and, uh, and steam and, you know, the, the kind of smell you get in a ship when it's been struck. We were very lucky, I mean, we got, it got hit in the island. It the destroyed. island being the superstructure yeah, in the middle well, of the... Yeah, it's a control centre as well, in the, in the but it, it wipes out our crash barriers, it wiped out the uh, aircrew uh, um, sick bay, which was there, killed a number of people and injured a great number more, but the thing they had, the Japs hadn't accounted for, they had so much success with the Americans, when they dived into the Americans, wood, they had wooden flight decks, and they used to go straight through into the hangar, of course the damage was enormous, I think, I've got to figure, I, one of the ca air carriers lost 800 crew in one suicide bomber attack. That was an American kind. Yeah, the Franklin, yeah. And, uh, of course, when they... I mean, they, they dented our flight deck about so the, the an inch or so. You had we, we, we had armoured flight decks, thick armoured flight decks. Uh, one went into the Victorious, it bounced off the front and uh, went in the sea. And that was the first one of eight. We had eight kamikaze attacks and survived them all. The first one blew a great big hole in the in the side of the island. And they always went for the control tower. It blew a hole as big as you could have driven a double-decker bus through it. Um, one of the barriers was put out of action, but we were flying off again within 30 minutes. Nobody panicked. Uh, you know, it's proud to be English. They um, got out plates of steel and, and just put them over the holes. And uh, it was a bit rough taking off, but um, OK. Um, but the, the thing we did learn about them is that you either had to destroy them on the way in 
But once they started diving, you had to completely disintegrate them, otherwise they would hit you. But we had our damage repaired. Within about a couple of hours, we were landing on, with jury rigged barriers, we were land, landing on and taking off aircraft. So much so, there was an American observer on board. Uh, you know, he was there to observe what, how we operated. And I, I can remember his words this day. He said, he said Jesus Christ. He said, on, on an American carrier, one suicide bomber, and it's six months in Pearl Harbor for repairs. He's on a limey carrier, it's sweepers, man, your brooms. And we went on doing Operation Iceberg every two days back to um, to uh, refuel and then back again. And I think the Americans began to be glad that they had a, a fleet there. But they weren't really pleased that they had the fleet there until the kamikaze started attacking their fleet. And a kamikaze on an American carrier was a horrendous attack. The Franklin was burned down to the waterline because, you see, they had wooden flight decks. Now, we carried about 50% of the number of planes that one of their big carriers tried, but we had armoured flight decks. And eventually the Japs found us with kamikazes and attacked, and Indefatigable was the first one to be attacked. And we had to, do, all, all that we did was did a bit of welding and got the, got the ship back uh, in one piece again, as it were, and repaired the barriers. But it didn't hold us up, and we went straight back. And the Americans were very impressed with this, that we were not frightened off by the, the kamikaze attacks. We were back in action again. And indeed, everything the Americans asked us to do, we did. And we even volunteered to stay longer than they wanted us to stay. And this was where we, I think, were, were taken aboard by the Americans, regarded as part of the attack against uh, Japan. But anyway, that was that. But it was, it was a remarkable success, really, that they were able to survive that, and we did survive it, and went on operating, and they got the whole the, of all the gear back working uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and a lot of um, other ships were struck. Uh, where, where the most damage was done was if they were struck where there was no armour, and that was aft of the, the uh, lift aft, and forward of the lift forward usually. And if you were struck there, of course, where there was no armour, then there was a lot of damage. <coughs> but we managed... But the British fleet as a whole survived extremely well. But um, again, uh, that uh, kamikazes were... Uh, uh, one found it hard to accept the fact that uh, you were fighting a man who's way up there in the sky who is determined to kill himself and kill you as well. It, 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 it was an uncanny feeling. I mean, the Germans always fought uh, cleanly, uh, uh, you know, and they wanted to live probably as much as we did. But uh, I was glad when the Pacific War ended. <laughs> <laughs>